a portion of this service, we will invite you to journal. So now would be a good time to grab a notebook and pen if you'd like to participate in that. Please do, if possible for you, find a comfortable space where you can relax and be present for the service. While we wait for others to join, I'm excited to give a little refresher on Sanctuary. So Sanctuary, Sanctuary Church is a 508C1A faith-based organization. We use psilocybin mushrooms as a sacrament to connect us to divinity. If you, like many others throughout history, hold these mushrooms as a sacrament for sincere and intentional spiritual practice, you can head over to our membership page on sanctuary.org. Becoming a member is a five-step process, which includes a discovery call with me. And after becoming a member, you'll gain access to our membership portal, where member-only events are posted, including sacrament opportunities, and our members only telegram chat, which is a really great place to connect with everyone. Please do consider donating to Sanctuary. All donations currently go toward operational expenses, which include helping us with securing a location for in-person Sunday services and group sacrament services. We have a great vision here at Sanctuary, which includes a community built on sustainability through permaculture and more accessible and frequent opportunities for services with our sacrament for members. For cash donations, please see the link that we're going to drop in the box after service. And for ideas around in-kind donations, please reach out to us via email info at sanctuary.com or dot, yeah, dot com, uh, <laughs> dot org, dot org, thanks, it's early for me, uh, these Sunday services are a place we gather together as a currently small but growing community, although we do not partake in the sacrament during these services, we find common ground together in our recognition that the mushroom has brought us together, for more information on sacramental services currently available, you may reach out to me at info at sanctuary.org. The service portion of our gathering is around 30 minutes of silent participation on your part. Courtney and I will be facilitating the service today and Eric will be leading optional discussion afterwards, which we will allot around an hour and a half for until noon. And we do invite you to participate if you feel called. We have two readings every Sunday. We will be moving through different texts throughout our time together. Right now, we are reading from the Tao Te Ching, our main text, and the game of life and how to play it. We chose these readings because we feel they communicate the message we often receive from our time spent with the mushroom in different ways. We'll also read from a poem, our litany of gratitude, which is read to acknowledge our oneness with all that is. So I will give us just a minute to get settled in and begin our service. Um, again, please get as comfortable as you can. And thank you for joining us this Sunday. If you're unable to stay later uh, for the discussion, uh, thank you for being here with us. So. Go ahead and welcome you again, and thank you for joining our community and celebration this Sunday. As we begin our statement of faith, we recognize that this statement does not exhaust our full extent of our faith. We believe that sacred mushrooms are the primary source of personal and divine revelation. We seek counsel from the mushroom to find direction and inspiration in our faith practice. And we believe that all individuals who seek true revelation from divinity can do so. I will pass it over to Courtney this morning for our meditation. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I invite you now to get even more comfortable. You may need to wiggle a little bit. Uh, rotate your shoulders and just kind of shake out any excess energy that you might have coming into this service today. We're going to do a short meditation, uh, about five minutes, 
long. So uh, I invite you now to close your eyes. <clears throat> Take a few deep breaths through your nose and out through your mouth. If you feel comfortable doing so, you might place your hands on your body. Uh, I like to place my right hand on the center of my chest and my left hand in the center of my stomach. And continue with your breathing. Focus on the breath going in and out of your body. Allow any thoughts, feelings, or sensations within your body come up. If you notice any areas of tension, you can send those areas breath to help them relax. If they don't relax, that's okay. Allow them to be exactly what they are without forcing, criticizing or ignoring them. As you continue to breathe, allow yourself to relax even more and focus on finding a safe, calm, compassionate and loving space inside yourself. You don't have to be concerned with the entirety of yourself feeling safe, calm, compassionate, or loving. The goal here is to just find an area that encompasses this state, no matter how big or small, and build from there. Connect with this space no matter how small, of safe, calm, compassion, and love. Some people like to envision this space as a ball of light in the center of their body. Allow this ball of light to grow with every breath. From this space, allow this ball of light to reach out into your internal world. You may find a thought, feeling, or emotion that's asking for attention. If you find this within your body, if possible, you can deepen your connection with it by placing a hand on that area. If you find it's coming up in a physical place. Allow yourself to communicate and connect with any area that's coming up in a way that feels right to you. Some people are highly visual and see their, these different areas in their body represented as characters. Some people more so feel them in their body or being. Some people hear these areas coming up audibly.
Sometimes these areas needing attention just show up as thoughts. Just remember there's no right or wrong way to drop in here with meditation, connecting with yourself. This experience is unique and entirely your own. I invite you to be patient with this process in meditation and throughout the service today and throughout discussion. Keep in mind that this is all about trying and showing up for ourselves and our community. You may remember that if you feel called to during journaling time today to write about what you're experiencing right now in this meditation or anything that might be coming up for you. Also invite you today to let go of the desire to accomplish something during our service. Just drop in as much as you're able to, mindful, peaceful, patient presence, all with the goal of self-discovery. As we come out of this deepened state of meditation, take a few more deep breaths. Remember to thank yourself for showing up today. Every single part of you, no matter what that looks like today. You can begin to slowly wiggle your body. You can stretch out your fingers and just bend your legs a little bit, rotate your head. Continue to breathe and come back in this space with all of us. All right. Thank you all so much for being present during that meditation. Thank you, Courtney. Now pass it over to Alex. Good morning, everybody. This is chapter five, the law of karma and the law of forgiveness. We can receive only that which we give. The game of life is a game of boomerangs. Thoughts, deeds, and words return sooner or later with astounding accuracy. This is the law of karma and what is meant in the well-known proverb, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The more a person knows, the more they are responsible for. And a person with a knowledge of spiritual law, which he does not practice, suffers greatly in consequence. It is said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we replace the word Lord with the word law, it will make many passages in the Bible much clearer. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the law. It is the law which takes vengeance, not God. God has been said to have created humanity after God's own image, or better yet, imagination. This is the perfect idea for each of us, for, for we can only be what we imagine ourselves to be and only attain what we see ourselves attaining. Nothing ever happens without an onlooker, is an ancient saying. You see first your failure or success, joy or sorrow, before it swings into visibility from the scene set in your own imagination. Jesus Christ said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Freedom comes through knowledge, a knowledge of spiritual law. Obedience precedes authority, 
and the law obeys when we obey the law. The law of electricity must be obeyed before it becomes your servant. When handled ignorantly, it becomes a deadly foe. So with the laws of the mind. The divine pattern is the only safe pattern to work by. We must be watchful of our desire, for desire is a tremendous force and must be directed in the right channels or chaos ensues. In demonstrating caution regarding our desires, the most important step is the first step, to ask all right. We should always demand only that which is ours by divine right. The curious thing is we always get just what we desire when we relinquish personal will, thereby enabling infinite intelligence to work through us. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the law. It is learning to stand still, which seems so difficult to us all. Thanks, Alex. Um, and now we'll go into our litany of gratitude. And I invite you to unmute your mics if you feel called. And join me in saying, we live in all things. All things live in us. Give us just a moment. We live by the sun, we feel by the moon, we move by the stars. We live in all things, all things live in us. We eat from the earth, we drink from the rain, we breathe of the air. We live in all things, all things, all things, and all things live in us. We call to each other, we listen to each other, our hearts deepen with love and compassion. We live in, we live in, all, live in all things. All things, all all things, things live in us. in us. We depend on the trees and animals. We depend on the earth. Our minds open with wisdom and insight. We, we, live, we all live in all things. things. All, all things, things live in us. us. We dedicate our practice to others. We include all forms of life. We celebrate the joy of living and dying. We live in all we things. Live in all, things. All, things. all things. All things. All things. All things. Us. We are full of life. We are full of death. We are grateful for all beings and companions. Thank you, everyone. If you'd like to thank you your mics again. We'll Take a moment. I invite Grant to do our second reading today. All right. So actually, um, it looks like this doesn't match the one that you sent me. Which one would you like? Let's do the one on the reading. I'm so sorry. Oh, OK. Actually, it looks like just a different ter interpretation. Great. Um, OK, great. He who knows how to guide a ruler in the path of Tao does not try to override the world with force of arms. It is in the nature of a military weapon to turn against its wielder. Wherever armies are stationed, thorny bushes grow. After a great war, bad years invariably follow. What you want is to protect efficiently your own state, but not to aim at a self-aggrandizement. <clears throat> After you have attained your purpose, you must not parade your success. You must not boast of your ability. You must not feel proud. You must rather regret that you had not been able to prevent the war. You must never think of conquering others by force. For to be overdeveloped is to hasten decay. And this is against Tao. And what is against Tao will soon cease to be. Thank you, Grant. All right, everyone. Now, if you have that journal nearby, we will take a moment to reflect on the readings today. And we do have some prompts. Uh, I will read through those for you. And we'll take about five minutes to reflect. So the first prompt, take a moment to reflect on your imagination of self. Is what you imagine yourself to be your highest potential? If not, why not? 
And the second, imagine yourself attaining what you consider this highest potential self to be. How is it different than your current imagination of self? And how is it similar? I'll set the timer.
All right, if you'd like to finish up your thoughts. And we will close out our service portion today, recognizing we've come together with intentions of service to the land and all its inhabitants. It is in our hearts to go forth into the world with the collective consciousness. We encourage you to stay for continued fellowship of conversation around our readings. And for those unable to stay, we thank you for being with us. As we further our conversation, please remember that all perspectives are welcome as we search for spiritual truth that unites us all. I do have just a few announcements. Uh, Katrine will be offering three mindfulness sessions in December around holidays um, on December 9th, 16th, and 23rd at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, those are 30 minute sessions. They're really wonderful if you're able to join. Uh, we also have postponed our December retreat and moved it to January. We've made a little bit of a, um, a uh, shift to, instead of one sacrament service we will be offering two sacrament services uh, January 21st through 26th. Um, so that is geared toward our active members who would like to uh, work with us in a retreat setting uh, and with the sacrament. And I believe that's all I have for today. And we'll end our recording.